Greetings, delegates and friends of the Spring Hill District Missionary Baptist Association. On behalf of moderator Arthur Milton and second vice moderator Dr. F. Bernard Mitchell, we welcome you to this virtual edition of the 152nd edition of our beloved association, where we will hear the annual address from our moderator. While we are still in the midst of a national pandemic, as well as having to deal with the myriad of issues that plague our society, let us as the body of Christ remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. It is for this purpose that we have come to hear from our chieftain as he gives us a word of hope and encouragement in these perilous times. Deacon Dexter Taylor will come with the reading of scripture and the Reverend Terry Myers will offer the prayer. Our association musician, Sister Audrey Myers, will bless us in song. And then our chieftain, moderator Arthur Milton, the pastor of the Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church in Mendenhall, Mississippi, will come and bless us with the word. May God bless you and may God keep you. Scripture read it this afternoon will be coming from the book of Romans, 12th chapter, beginning at verse 1. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And, he, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than others, soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether well, prophecy, let us prophecy, according to the proportion of faith. A ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor and preferring one another. That was the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Our most gracious and ever-loving God, it is in the name of Jesus that we come right now. Father God, we come at a time when things are not as they used to be. Father, we come at a time when there are questions. But Master, we come to you because we know that you have all the answers. Lord, we thank you this evening for the blessed privilege of being able to petition your throne. For Lord, here we are now in the midst of a pandemic. Lord, we are in the midst of uncertainty. But one thing that we do know that's certain, and that is you are a never-changing God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come now praying and asking that you will look down upon us, look down upon this association, look down, Master, upon uh, the leaders of this association and then all of the churches and all of the members. For, Master, we have gone through some difficulties. We've gone through some ups and downs. We are still in the midst of them. But, Father, we do lean and depend on you. For, Father, we know that you have the answer. Lord, we know that you have all power in your hands. So, Lord, I pray right now that you will please, sir, have mercy upon this association, that you will bless us, Father, as never before, that you will continuously keep your loving arms of protection around us. Lord, even though we have 
had to say farewell to many members. We've had to say farewell to preachers and loved ones. But Lord, in the midst of it all, you've always been there to keep us. You've always been there to wipe tears from our eyes. So Lord, we pray now that as we prepare to just say a word to the members of this association, that Lord, you will speak. Lord, that you will give insight. You will give direction. But most of all, Lord, that you will let us know that you are still in charge, that you're still with us, that we're still holding on to you. And Lord, that you still have your arms wrapped around us. Master, we pray you bless us now, that you keep us in your care. Lord, and when it is all said and done, and when it is yours to call, and we have to answer, Master, bless it that we'll be able to hear you through the association and all others. Father, just simply say, servants, well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Now, come up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over many. Father, we thank you now. Thank you. We do thank praise you. you and we exalt you. And we do it all in the mighty and precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen.
our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, first vice moderator, Pastor Dennis Grant, who taught me so much. Uh, thank God for his kindness and his goodness. To our second vice moderator, Pastor Bernard Mitchell. To our Congress President, Dr. Clifton Bogans. Our Congress Vice President, Pastor Kevin Thomas. To our parliamentarian, Pastor Terry Myers. To our minister leaders, Pastor Ronnie Newsom. To our pastors and their wives, to our preachers and their wives, to our deacons and their wives, to our board members and department leaders, to the Spring Hill family, and lastly to my only lovely wife, Miss Milton. I greet you in the merciful and magnificent name, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Again, it is with a tremendous sense of humility and with an overwhelming feeling of gratitude to our God and to you for entrusting me with this awesome privilege of serving as the 17th moderator of this great association. It is a known fact that our country is suffering from this worldwide pandemic. However, I am continually praying for our protection. If we trust God and never doubt Him, He promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. Let us not be dismayed. Whatever be time, our God will take care of us. As you all are aware, we did not meet for our Congress of Christian Education in May, in an effort to prevent us from contracting and spreading this deadly virus. We have also decided not to meet for our any session that would have been normally been this week, Thursday night for our musical and Saturday for the one day session. Therefore, I wanted to speak to you by way of virtue. First of all, I have faith that everything is going to be all right. We need to keep the faith and keep praying, because prayer still works. Let's pray that we be able to come together in 2022 uh, and meet with a strong session. Our association is still strong. We are still at work. If you need us, please reach out. We are here to assist in any way we can. Now I want to give my deepest sympathy all of you who have lost loved ones in the past two years. Always be comfort in what Jesus said. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. I also want to let you know that we gave a total, and all we've done is said, a total of $10,000 to assist our neighbors in Louisiana. Thank you so much for all your support. I believe God bless us and we can bless somebody else. Keep up the good work, keep blessing others, God will bless us. Now, I do have a message for you tonight. Hello. I want to encourage you from the book of St. Mark, fourth chapter, in the 39th verse. St. Mark, 439. And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there were a great calm. I want to comfort you with these 
words tonight. The storm will pass. The storm will pass. In this text, the disciples are trapped in a terrible storm. They are in this storm because they have commanded, they have been commanded by the Lord to cross the Sea of Galilee to the other side. These men are in the will of God, but yet they are struggling in a storm. Stuck in a storm and are unable to get out. You ever been found, you ever find yourself stuck in a storm? Mm -hmm. And you tried all you could. You couldn't make any headway. I need to tell you tonight, storms are never pleasant. But they are do present benefit for our lives. In the book of Hebrews, 12th chapter, verse 11, it says, no discipline seemed pleasant at the time but painful later on. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace from those who have been trained by it. Mm -hmm. This is the first of Jesus' nature miracle in the Gospel of Mark. A nature miracle is different from a healing miracle. Notice this story have similarity or parallel with the Old Testament story of Jonah. When you read Jonah in this epistle, the Gospel of Mark, Jonah is asleep on a ship. Jesus is asleep on a ship. Jonah is asleep and the crew members are fearful for their lives. Jesus is asleep and the disciples are fearful for their lives. Now that's where the similarity ends. All right. Because Jonah is in a storm because of disobedience. Oh, oh. The disciples are in a storm because they obey Jesus' command. Now can I tell you, you can run into a storm doing right. Spring Hill again, storms are never pleasant, but they do bring benefit. In a time where crisis would arise, Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus needed to take them to a new turf. He needed to carry them to an environment they'd never been in before. You know, you know, the strength of your faith uh, got to be tested every now and then. Mm -hmm. In the faith that cannot be tested, cannot be trusted. Mm -hmm. Don't trust a faith. That cannot be put to the fire. Yes, sir. The text said it was evening. And Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Bring here what I have discovered about Jesus. He don't always tell us what we're going to run into on our way to the other side. That's right. Oh, brothers and sisters, sometimes some things are better not knowing. Because if we know some things, we wouldn't even try. Mm -hmm. yeah, if children of Israel had known when they left Egypt, there would be a Red Sea waiting on them. They never would have left Egypt. Brothers and sisters, sometimes, sometimes God just give us a little bit of time. You see, if you take life uh, by the yard, it's hard. But if when you take life one inch at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time, you can handle it better. Uh, let today care for today. And let tomorrow take care of tomorrow when tomorrow comes. So Jesus sent the mother to the way when they got into the ship. When they started to the other side, all was well. That brings me to my first point. My first point is the power wow. of the storm. Mm -hmm. The Sea of Galilee, like 700 feet below sea level, surrounded by hills and mountains. 
the cold air from Mount Hur and the warm air from the Sea of Galilee produce some powerful wind. Oh, yeah. uh, the sea can become one minute mm -hmm. and powerful the next minute. Uh, the sea can become one minute and violent the next minute. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the beginning of the journey, uh, there was no trouble. Everything was waiting. I believe there's somebody here tonight who's watching me uh, can agree with me that though the sea be nice, condition can so quickly change. That's right. Oh, brothers and sisters, you can leave the shore can be calm mind, but in a matter of minutes, you can be in a storm. Uh -huh. uh, the old sea of life can change in a moment. Mm -hmm. Can I tell somebody? You may be enjoying smooth sail now, but don't get beside yourself. It only take a moment oh. for things to change. Mm -hmm. uh, a midnight and midnight phone call can put your ship in a storm. Mm -hmm. You can go to the doctor just to get a physical. Don't think anything is wrong. Uh, but the doctor check you out, come back out and say, I see something. You got to have surgery. Oh, uh, your ship is in a storm. Mm -hmm. You can kiss your spouse in the morning mm -hmm. goodbye and say, I love you. Mm -hmm. They can say, I love you back. And you go home thinking everything is all right. But when you get back home that evening, everything is gone. Your wife, your spouse, has walked out on you. Oh, took everything God. away. Oh, your ship God. is in a storm. In a storm. Yeah. Now, can I tell you, uh, you're in a storm now. Maybe you are coming out of a storm, or going in a storm, but the storm are going to come. Nobody in here are exempt from the storm. Now, sometimes storms come because of our sin. Uh, it's our fault. Sometimes we are not bearing our cross. We are reaping the crop. Sometimes God sends the storm. He sent a storm in David's life. He sent a storm in Job's life. And sometimes Satan is allowed to bring the storm. Uh, so that is the power of the storm. Then we got the problem. Of a storm. For in here, the great storm on the Sea of Galilee. That night was not the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the text said that a great wind arose and the wave beat against the ship that were being tossed to and fro. They could not bring the boat under control. Mm -hmm. Oh, brothers and sisters, the great storm that night in Mark. Chapter 4 was in the hearts of the disciples. They doubted the goodness of Jesus. They were looking at the situation and not the Savior. They were looking at the storm and not the Savior. When your eyes is on the storm, it's hard to see the Savior. Oh, they doubted his goodness. And then they also doubted his grace. Jesus did not save us to abandon us when the storms of lives come our way. He did not bring us out of darkness to his marvelous light to leave us when the storms come. They doubted his goodness, they doubted his grace, then they doubted his guarantee. He said, let us go over to the other side. If he said go over, you never got to fear about going under. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be afraid of the storm. Okay. That is, power of the storm, problem of the storm, and then lastly, the purpose, purpose. of the storm. Brothers and sisters, storms are essential to our spiritual development. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a tree that should be wind tossed, and then the root grow deeper, and the tree grow tall. Sometimes God allows the storm to toss us that our roots grow deeper and we grow taller in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the storm is you will never be a strong Christian until you've been wind tossed. Mm -hmm. You will never shout until you've been 
We ain't talking. Yeah. You would never give God glory. Raise your head until you've been wind tossed. Yeah. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Jesus was asleep in the midst of a terrible storm. This was the only time in the gospel mm -hmm. that, that you hear of Jesus sleeping. Let me raise the question, why is Jesus sleeping in a storm? Let me tell you why. Restful sleep, despite danger, indicate trust in God. That's it. That, that's why David said in Psalm 3-5, Then I lay down and sleep in peace. In peace. Woke up safely, for the Lord was watching over me. Mm -hmm. And then Psalm 4-8, he said, I will lie down in peace and sleep. For though I am alone, O Lord, you will keep me safe. Brothers and sisters, when you trust God, your sleep is sweet. Jesus was in the hidden part yeah. of the ship, asleep on a pillow. They went and woke up Jesus and asked him this question. Master, cares that we perish. Look how Jesus handled the storm. Most of us uh, cannot sleep in a storm. Uh -huh. uh, brothers and sisters, when you really trust God, we will trust him in Psalm 121. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. Yeah, the disciples said, Master, do you care? Anybody ask that question? <laughs> uh, Master, do you care if we perish? Bring him. Jesus got up. Got up. Mm -hmm. uh, and went up. Walked out in the midst of the storm. Walked to the wind. And the sea. Jesus had three words that brought everything under control. That's right, that's right. He said, Peace, Peace. be still. He is a God, a God. over nature. Yes, Whatever he says, yes, nature has to obey him. That's right. Yes. If God says, the Son, as you in, Stand still. Yes, you ain't will have to stand still. Yes, uh -huh. If God said, Jericho walls fall down. Yes, sir. The wall would all fall down. Yes, sir. Yeah, Do I have a witness this morning, this evening? Come on, man. Jesus said, Peace be still. Yes, he is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. He can speak peace in. Your storm, right. because there's power in His word. Yeah. When He said peace, uh, there will be peace. When He said peace, be still. Uh, the wind got quiet, uh, and the sea got tired. Yeah. The wave uh, got calm, and uh, somebody. Uh, on board said, uh, what matter is man his days? Yeah. That even the wind uh, and the sea yeah. obey him. Yeah. And you're all right, uh, yeah. so spring here. Uh, can I tell you uh, what matter a man he is? Uh, I want 
God bless you, God keep you.